you guys have a buy rating on Tencent. That's correct. Why? Um, I think that Tencent still has uh, a bunch of like catalysts in future. One of the key things we uh, find that uh, just one week ago, Tencent starts to monetize its second largest mobile game. It's uh, because Tencent has been like frustrated by game code's approval issue for I think for one year. But now we start to see some early sign that this 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 is going to be easy. And the second thing is that Tencent has a pretty strong game pipeline uh, in the coming, I think, one or two years. Definitely Tencent's advertising probably is a little bit weak due to the macro weaknesses, but I think, I, I think it's not uh, that serious. The more important thing is that we do see that Tencent, as one of the largest technology companies in China, could be a very good safe harbor uh, under current situation. You mentioned about the pipeline. They dropped PUBG after it didn't get approval from regulators or switching to some of these more uh, similar games that they can actually make money off of. How well can they actually monetize as they shift some of these users to these games now? Or are we likely to see a little bit of weakness in terms of the guidance and gaming revenue? Uh, first of all, actually, they simply update the game with a new title. So I would say like 100% of the gamers will switch to the new game. Hmm. And secondly, because Tencent has always been relied on its social network to promote the game, which means usually I will play my friends with those games. So uh, a, a very, like, I, I, I can think of like promotion method is that if you introduce your friends to a game, that you can win some reward. So that's a very powerful weapon Tencent has. So that's, that's why that we are very optimistic in the new game. Uh, we estimate that it could bring about like 10 billion in terms of revenue and about five to eight percent of the net income, additional ad, uh, net income for that sim a single game. Wow. Uh, Sean, it's Tom here in Beijing. Operating margins, the view is, and they've been squeezed, of course, that that's going to continue, maybe a drop of another 13 uh, percent. When do those operating margins start to turn around, do you think? Um, uh, first of all, I think like uh, operating margins like uh, due to uh, several factors. If you ask me some of the long term issue is that Tencent is more rely on the uh, external developers, which means that they need to uh, give like uh, more shares to the develop uh, external game developers. That's something for a, 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 a long term like issue. And th the other thing is that the some low margin business like the uh, uh, fina internet finance and the business related uh, bit, uh, uh, revenue is like ramping up, so I would say that I, I would say that Tencent's like uh, uh, margin, like uh, maybe that in the next one or two years we will continue to see the margin, like uh, where some be some margin pressure for Tencent. Mm. Uh, Sean, you can't really talk about Tencent without also talking about the other big player in the room, Alibaba. We've got a terminal uh, showing how Alibaba has outpaced Tencent in terms of revenue growth since June 2016, almost consistently. Why wouldn't you just be? investing all of your capital in Alibaba rather than Tencent. What's going on that Alibaba, what is Alibaba doing right that Tencent isn't quite getting at this point in terms of revenue growth? Well, uh, I think that first of all, uh, I if there's one like stock I'm going to choose, I would rather go to Alibaba because I think simply for the valuation, uh, Alibaba now is trading between like 25 to 30, uh, whereas Tencent is trading at like 35 to 40 something. Uh, the other thing is that under current situation, uh, because Alibaba's culture is very like from top down, they have a strong management and the middle level people only to imp implement uh, all these strategies. Uh, the other thing for Tencent that they encourage the middle level people to have their own thoughts and have this horse racing mechanism. So on the weak, um, uh, relatively weak markets, the, this kind of centralized uh, like organizing, org organizing and this cop culture may uh, uh, outpace the whole market. So uh, if there's one company, uh, if I need to choose between Baba and Tencent, I would definitely go to Baba. Okay, so who has a better management team? Uh, well, I would say Baba. They, they have a, like, I think that they have, as I said, that it's more for, for, for the cop culture thing. Um, okay. So Baba has a like, strong, very high level management team. It's very visionary and try to implement the, the old strategy uh, to the very low like, uh, 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 level people. Whereas Tencent really actually encourage the low, the mid level people to like, have their, form their own product. I think these are very two different cop culture. You can't really say who is better, but under, uh, again, under current situation, yeah. I think that a strong management team and who can implement all these strat strategies will be, uh, uh, will be a winner in this market. We haven't even talked about the trade war, yeah. um, but most people say, you know what, 
these stocks aren't really trade war stocks. They're, they're more about a play on the domestic economy. You know, mm. now that the economy is showing signs that perhaps it's bottoming out, can, can Alibaba actually reap the benefits from that? Uh, first of all, actually, the direct impact to e-commerce platform is limited because if you look at the cross-border e-commerce, like whole market only takes about three to four percent of the total e-commerce market. But I think that's more from the demand side. Uh, I think that's because if you go back to like in January or last December or something, you will find that China's uh, consumer uh, uh, sentiment is really weak. That really uh, impacts people's like. Uh, perception towards Alibaba. But I think that after that, my impression is that from January to May, that is something, I think the people's sentiment is like uh, slightly recovering. Um, so uh, I, I guess that in future that because uh, if you say the, the what's the most, the, 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 the goods category is going to most impacted by trade war, that will be like those uh, electronic devices uh, and also home, yeah, home yeah. appliance. That only takes about 10, about 10 to 15 percent of Alibaba. Uh, so uh, Alibaba is more heavily rely on apparels and uh, like the uh, clothing and this stuff. This will be less impacted by trade war.